Hello, my name is uh, Francisco Javier Fuentes. Uh, currently, I'm employed at the Center for English as a Second Language here at the University of Arizona. I'm currently a coordinator for part-time community programs and the teen English program. All right, Javier. And as I understand, you grew up in Nogales. That is correct. And Nogales is a city on the border between uh, the United States and Mexico. So there's a, there's a U.S. side and a Mexico side. And um, what I want to ask you is basically, uh, your, do you consider yourself Mexican-American, Mexican-American, what, what would you? I mean, for the sake of a quick definition, it would be Mexican-American. Um, but I, because we are a, a big subgroup here in this country, uh, so that lays respect to the fact that I live here and I'm a citizen here, although I wasn't originally a citizen. Um, okay. But so you I, were sorry, you were born on the Mexican side. That is correct. Okay. Uh, I was born in Mexico until the age of five, and my dad immigrated us when I was five. So I did all my most of, all my schooling from kinder on forward here in the United States in Nogales, Arizona, and the university later. Um, I became a citizen when I was 19 years old. Um, and uh, and I did that to broaden the opportunities that I have for my careers and employment. Um, okay. But I, at heart, I'm Mexican. I was born there. That is mm -hmm. my country. That is my first language. Um, okay. I studied that in, in, in college as well. It was one of my <clears throat> degrees. So. Okay. And Mexico was a former Spanish colony. That is correct. And now we are in southern Arizona, which used to be part of Mexico and is now the United States. So let's talk a little about uh, just a general idea. What is colonialism? Well, colonialism, it's, it's a big term. Yeah. Uh, and it could be many things to many people. Um, in a simple sense, colonialism is a... Uh, a time, an epic time in history when um, European countries uh, would uh, take over uh, the Americas, what we know now as the Americas, uh, Native American lands, mm -hmm. whether it was the Aztecs, the Incas, whether it was the, the Manhattan, uh, whether it was the Cherokee, mm -hmm. whatever you name it, mm -hmm. uh, uh, they would invade uh, foreign lands and use the term, I will use the term conquer, mm -hmm. uh, and establish the European way of life in order to benefit themselves economically via resources, mm -hmm. via mm -hmm. uh, uh, control of more land, expansion mm -hmm. of land. Um, in turn, the negative effects on the native people of these lands uh, were catastrophic. Okay. Um, catastrophic in the form of of losing power over yourself, control over yourself, control over your future, near future, uh, control over your beliefs, your religion, mm -hmm. control over your your way of life, uh, how you sus sustainability, okay. your form of economic sustainability. Okay. Uh, that was all taken away and the European ways were forced upon uh, the native peoples. Okay. And you can bring in disease as cutting 75% of the population right, right. because Native Americans did not have the immunities of mm -hmm, the, mm -hmm. uh, dis the European born diseases. Let me focus in on get a little personal with you and ask you when did you first I guess become aware or when did you first have an understanding of these effects of of colonization or the colonial you know how how it affected you, your people, your any your history. When, you know, so personally, when did you start to understand that? Do you think? Unfortunately, not until college. Okay. And being going through formal education at the university level, mm -hmm. uh, with professors uh, enlightening enlightening me with uh, that knowledge. Yeah. Um, you touched it in high school, if you're lucky, middle school, but it's not addressed in public education. Um, right. Um, the term you learn, 
but as far as the impact of peoples and the severity of, of things, yeah, um, you don't learn it in the right lens or perspective. I mean, these textbooks in K twelve right. are written with a European um, uh, epistemological uh, viewpoint, and so from their lens, you know, this is an American white Anglo history, and this right. is how. Latinos and Native Americans and African Americans are part of it, right? Rather than a true history that's comprehensively neutral, whereas you discuss how the clash of cultures um, um, and, and discuss power struggles mm -hmm. um, amongst different groups of people in the Americas, um, which would be. Uh, more balanced approach to teaching. Right. So you said you didn't really get this until college. It's very lightly touched on in high school or middle school. But Correct. You, you don't really get that understanding until college. So my next question is, but do you think most people who are from a colonized community, do you think most of those people are not as aware? That is correct. Uh, even people living in Mexico and Latin America, unless your parents talk about it yeah. and enlighten you about it, uh, your education is a here now. Right. right. And what it is now, uh, you talk about in many countries um, uh, corruptness mm -hmm. with government and, and, and people in power within the country, corruptness in the now. But no, nobody talks about how that corrupt the legacy came to be, of it, yeah. how that history came right. to be. The, Why is it more origin. prevalent yeah. in some countries right. more than others? Right. Uh, 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 and there's a reason behind that, and yeah. that's in colonialism. Right, kind of a sense of disenfranchisement right. and that kind of thing. Okay, um, getting back, you in, earlier you mentioned the word uh, conquest. So um, that is kind of the historical event, you know, I guess most people hear it as the conquest. So I guess getting back to this popular idea, how do people see the conquest, uh, you know, like m most people, do you think? It's funny you ask that because the term itself, if talked within that term in those ways, really changes the angle of the discussion and the dialogue. Right. All of a sudden mm -hmm. it's like, whoa, they don't, it was my people who were conquered. Um, rather than if you talk about who discovered America and the arrival of Columbus and the discovery of America, then it makes it more neutral safe. Right. Um, so using the correct terms to discuss the actual events in history is first a big first step to, to getting to be, to increase awareness mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. amongst all of us. Okay, so let's talk, I mean, you're a professional educator so what do you believe is the way to approach education and this? You talk about history as, as, as a land who is from a perspective of, of neutral lands. Uh, this area in the Southwest, for example, was here first. Mm -hmm. Who were the first people that came here? Um, then how did the other people get here? And talk about in what it is without sugarcoating it. Right. Um, and then talk about and use actual representations. There's lots of journals from those times. Right. Um, well, and let me interrupt. At, at those times, if the journals or whatever the papers, uh, if they're written by the colonizer or the conqueror, it will be from the perspective of, you know, civilizing these places and bringing right. order and control and all that kind of stuff. And using that lens to help people to elucidate that this is the perception of the people coming, the, the colonizers. Right. But then there's also journals from those days that come from a neutral place. Right. With the injustices. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's okay to bring it up from a person for that uh, perception of civilizing people and helping them out mm -hmm. kind of thing. Um, but it's also okay as, as an uh, educator or a school to facilitate the discussion that is that really okay? Right. What were the real ramifications? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And how would you feel? And, and, and use it in the examples of, I always use my example of the food that we eat and I was brought up with. Mm -hmm. I believe the food menudo. It's a form of soup. Yeah. Um, somebody who's not aware of the soup will think it's disgusting and nasty. Right. Um, 
I may think the same thing going to somebody else's house and looking at their soup from their way right. of living. Um, but in reality, it's just different. Right. Uh, and understanding that things that are different are not bad. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. forming an epistemology from that foundation of neutrality mm -hmm. is best to understand the social injustices that happened historically and okay. why we're at where we're at with social injustices now. So as a final thought, I wonder, you say approaching it from a neutrality or... From the perspective of lands geographically. Okay, okay. Now, if, if uh, the schools or parents or educators were to take a more radical approach and teach it as a conquest and as a type of cultural domination and exploitation and that kind of thing, do you think people would resist that? Well, see, it's also the, the play of discourse and words. You call history, you call it true history, real history. Um, there are current right now cartoons and shows on television that are trying to do that. Right. To educate people is what really happened. Right, right. Um, so you use that, you bring in the terms conquest, you bring in the terms that you just mentioned as part of the curriculum. But that's not the name of it, okay. because because in itself, then history then becomes um, the problem with history is that we always take an angle or a lens mm -hmm. to present the material. Right. There's always a bias. Yeah. Then we lose part of the population. Right. But if you start from a neutral piece of geography, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and then talk about and uh, with some common themes throughout the course, conquest. Uh, acceptability, rejection, whatever, assimilation, whatever terms we want to use, culturation, inculturation, mm -hmm. acculturation, all those terms, and use them as themes, and then and talk about it's okay to say somebody made a mistake in history, right. Uh, and, right. and a real bad mistake, right. um, and it's okay if your skin had to do with that mistake, because as a Mexican, I'm on both sides. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, I got half Spanish and half of uh, Native American, so half of me screwed with the other half yeah um, so um, I have to see it from what it was okay and what it's gotten us and learn from it yeah so and, we can change the present and as a white person from the eastern United States uh, I didn't get any of that when I was growing up and in school mm -hmm. you know when we learned about the West I I I, I, I got totally the euro centric mm -hmm. view and so I didn't even and it's like that in Mexico that. too I mean, yeah there it's I don't know of any country who really speaks of history right from a racial perspective. Okay. And that's part of the problem when we leave race out. Thank you, Javier.